All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, as you can see, I've disassembled the front nose on the car. Uh, you know, my general approach with building this car is really to limit the amount of rework. You know, putting parts on the car, taking them off. So, you know, my build plan sort of, uh, uh, you know, accommodates this, uh, this process. Uh, but if you remember back in the steering rack episode, you know, I had to oversize these top holes and I don't want to leave it that way. So I'm actually using some aluminum brazing rods and I, I was able to braze uh, that hole shut and re-drilled it on the left side. I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. It's a little cold in the garage today, so I'm waiting for the temperature to warm up. Let's see, in the meantime, what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna cover uh, basically cutting out the center console. So, you know, one of the nice things about a super light, super light coupe uh, kit is uh, RCR provides all these interior panels. So I've got these panels that really finish the car off nice. You have this dash panel. You've got what they call the interior tub. There's a ceiling panel, and we also have a center console. So I want to cut out the center console, and that's what we'll cover in this video, uh, because I want to get sort of final placement for the pedals and seats, uh, because I really want to get that power brake booster mounted in the right place. Okay, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll work on the center console. Uh, I also may show uh, brazing that that uh, hole in the chassis, but you know, there's a million, there's like a million uh, brazing videos on the internet that, that do that process justice. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure if I'll cover it or not. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. Okay, so here's the center console. It's made out of, uh, it's just made out of fiberglass and it's meant to be either covered or, or sprayed with, uh, with an interior finish. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the builders use uh, this uh, soft feel paint called Alsa Soft, and it really is quite impressive, and it uh, will create a sort of a leathery feel uh, on all these fiberglass parts. I am not sure if I'm going to go in that direction. Uh, I, I sort of like, uh, you know, leather and also Alcantara. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. But anyway, in this video, what we're gonna do is, we've got a bit of cutting out to do. So this area we have to cut out to clear the front uh, center frame member. Uh, we have to cut out sort of the tail of this thing to uh, fit into the interior tub. And then the bottom, uh, we have to cut along this line. And then th this bottom ridge uh, will sit on top of the the center tub portion. So I'm going to use some masking tape. I'm going to mask off the area and just use a Dremel cutting wheel. And maybe to make the corners, I think I'll use, uh, you know, one of my favorite tools, the Christmas tree bit, just to get the corners done. Uh, but anyway, that's what we'll cover in this video. Okay, well, the first cut uh, I've marked off with masking tape. So I'm literally going to cut along this line here. And that should match up with the with the tub. And then I'll figure out if I want to cut the end of the front off first or the rear off first. You know, I don't want to cut any more material out on top than I have to, you know, because this is going to have to clear the frame. But if the frame comes here, I don't want to cut all this and leave a gap. So you know, I've got to just uh, be a little careful with that. And the tail end as well. I may not have to carve out all the way up top. I just want to carve as, as little as little as possible. So I'm going to move this work outside, put on a respirator, use a Dremel and cut this out. Okay, we've taken the work outside. I mean, this is a dirty, dusty job. I mean, this is the kind of cutting wheel on the Dremel I'm using and it really cuts uh, cuts through like butter so we did one side and I just do basically you know one width of the wheel at a time and hold it steady I will recommend wearing a respirator I mean there's a lot of fiberglass dust you don't want to breathe this stuff in uh, just a joy
you okay health warning here, but you definitely got to protect yourself when you're working with this material. All right, we'll finish up cutting the bottom and then we'll see where we take this. All right, well that came out pretty good. Uh, I've captured the width of the area on the center tub that where this thing is going to mount. So sort of in the center, this thing is really the perfect width, but then towards the end, it sort of tapers in. So I'm going to sort of trim out the sides towards the end here, and then I'll focus on We'll focus on carving out the, the rear and the, and the front and then get it fitted. Okay, well I decided I want to cut the front of the console out first. Uh, basically what I did was I, I held a, a straight edge along the side here and then measured the distance. It's like 1.3 inches and that gives me very close to a 2 inch gap which uh, I'm going to undercut this just a hair so I can, I can trim it up nice and smooth. Also the the mold line for the center console is right around here and I'm going to undercut this because I just want this to fit as close to that frame rail as possible. So I'm going to cut this up and then and then I'll start to fit it into the car. All right, we'll use the Christmas tree bit and just uh, mark the corners here, use some tape, just try to get this all centered. Hopefully this is enough to clear the back portion of the of the tub and then we could fit this fit this in and figure out if we need to trim this whole section here or not I'm just not sure okay well just trying to figure out what I do next here it looks like you know based on where the tail is going to wind up I'm going to have to cut more out of this section here so here's the mold line it's sort of hard to see but the mold line sort of lines up right with this frame rail, so I'm going to drill this or grind this out and then I'll grind out the tail. We should be able to fit this on top of the tub. All right, we're going to take a break from, uh, from the center console, but anyway, this is what I did about a week ago. I used uh, a product called Aluma Weld. and Aluma Weld is uh, a brazing rod. Here's a bunch of them laying on the ground uh, but anyway what you do is you heat up the aluminum to about 700 degrees and then the rod melts and I was able to fill in this hole which was too large you can see it over here it's a quarter inch too large and I was able to redrill that hole and, and improve the clamping force uh, on the uh, front steering rack I just welded up this front hole I tried to do this a couple times, but I couldn't get the aluminum hot enough. Uh, but it was a warmer day today, 50 degrees, and then I actually wound up using two torches. I used a propane torch and just leaned it up uh, to the area until it got to about 200 degrees. And then I used this MAP torch, which is much hotter, and, and it got the aluminum hot enough. But, you know, I will say if... Uh, you know, if I had to do a larger area and redrill the whole hole, I, I probably would have had a professional welder come in. But for this uh, piece, I think this will do. I, I just wanted to narrow down the gap uh, on the side of the hole. You know, it's about a quarter inch too wide. So I'm going to drill this hole. Hopefully it stuck to the aluminum. I think it did. And then we could mount and torque the uh, steering, the steering rack. All right, I didn't do a lot of filming here, but anyway, this is the left side, and you know, this is welded in nice, and you know what? The right side came out just as good. So look how, uh, look how I was able to close that hole up. Just the two torches uh, got the metal nice and hot, and, and that thing brazed up real well. So we're very happy with just getting, uh, getting the holes the right size. Uh, I also put backing plates or made some backing plates for the steering rack and it's now going to be mounted nice and tight. I don't have to worry about it. All right, well, for the sake of completeness, we're going to finish documenting the final install of the steering rack. A couple things, though, with regard to Aluma Weld that I did not mention. You know, the Aluma Weld is an alloy and it's actually harder than the aluminum uh, and you do have to get 
the metal very hot in order for it to in order for it to uh, melt so what I did was I created a backing plate you can see the area that blocked that top hole uh, by the discoloration uh, but this quarter inch steel piece retained the heat around the hole so when I got it hot enough the the aluma weld would melt I also use this uh, temperature gun. I got this at Home Depot. I've had this for years. I use it to check the tire temperature uh, on my RC cars. Uh, but that gave me a sense for how hot the metal was getting so I knew I was close to being able to work, uh, work the Aluma weld into the metal. The other thing is if you're using a higher power torch you could easily melt the aluminum and have a problem on your hand. You know, you, you get a thousand degrees or like 800 degrees, I think, is the melting point for aluminum. And then your whole firewall starts to melt, which isn't good. But anyway, I'm very happy with these repairs. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just do the final install. So you can see I have some anti-seize where the pillow blocks go. I'm going to put anti-seize on the parts that touch the aluminum tub, these are the backing plates that I fabricated. Uh, we'll put ADCs on the small washers for the steering gear. And as far as torque values, I'm gonna to torque the 3 8 inch bolts to 31 foot-pounds. I'll use some blue Loctite on those. And then we have some lock nuts on the 5 16 bolts that go through the steering gear. I'll torque those to 22 foot-pounds. And, uh, you know that'll do it for the steering uh, the steering rack install all right the steering rack is back on and torqued uh, let's just take a peek inside the uh, footwell here you can see the backing plates there I still used washers uh, the bolts needed a little more room uh, otherwise they would have uh, they would have ran out of room to thread into the pillow block plus I just like using washers so it doesn't gouge up the uh, paint on those backing plates and, and then they start to rust so that'll work out good all right that was uh that steering rack was really a challenge uh, because i had to drill those holes and i put them in the wrong place uh, but now we move on all right well we're back on the center console after doing a trial fit um it looks like I need to actually take this edge off and then this butts up against the bottom of that uh, center tub. So I just used some masking tape. I, I used a pencil just to get a nice crisp line and then we'll take this outside and then we'll trim this off and see how it, how it fits in the car. Okay, so we uh, trim the bottom down and here's what it looks like. There is a little interference with that AC uh, evaporator so I'm gonna put some masking tape on the on the center console and then just get just get a sense for how I have to trim that out and then I'll trim it out a little bit at a time and this should fit pretty good uh, by trimming all this down this may be a little low so I, I may have to build that back up uh, but oh no I rather have the center console a little lower i guess uh, there's just so little room in the cockpit here uh, but so far so good okay well we cut that first chunk off and you know we're uh you know it's starting to fit uh you know i was just a little unsure how much of that lip i needed to take off i just took off the whole lip uh, because i thought it would be hard to sort of get it get it to contour if I had a cut like halfway through. So I'm going to trim the front of this up a little more. I'll mark it and then trim it up and and then eventually this will settle down uh, where it needs to rest. All right, well we got the center console in the car. Let's see a couple comments here. You can see I, I clear now the evaporator. I probably should have uh, protected that evaporator but uh, I don't know if I gashed it up much, it's just ABS plastic, but anyway, probably a smart thing to do to protect that. The other thing is, you know, I have sort of the tail of this lined up with the tub, but now there's about a quarter inch gap 
in the rear, I can probably bring that armrest down just a little bit more, maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch would probably be too much. Uh, but I'll figure that out a later, at a later point. Uh, the whole reason to get this in the car is I want to see how close I can get the seats to the center console uh, because that's going to dictate where the pedals are and where the brake booster needs to go. So that's why I'm doing this now. Uh, I'm going to wash this piece off and we'll put the dash on so you can take a look at what the, uh, you know, what the interior looks like at this point. Okay, well, we got the interior back together with the center console in. I think this looks great. I mean, it really has a production feel, production car quality feel to it with all these, all these panels. You know, and once this gets finished with, uh, you know, with a nice surface, it'll look great. I also may get into 3D printing at some point later in the build and make some bezels and some trim, trim items for the interior to make it really look like a production car. Uh, but anyway, I got the, uh, I also was able to put the front compartment back on and I put a level on the steering rack and, you know, we're dead on. We're at, we're totally level for that steering rack, so that's nice. Uh, I was glad I learned some new techniques and learned how to use the uh, brazing rods. Uh, I did mention earlier in the video that the holes were a quarter inch too wide. They were actually an eighth of an inch too wide. So it really wasn't a lot of metal that I needed to add, but those brazing rods work great and I'm sure that technique will come in handy later in the builds because I, I know of a few holes I want to close up and relocate some, some items, so it, it'll come in really handy. Uh, let's see, I think I'll call it a wrap. On the next video, what we'll probably do is either get the body on the car uh, or I'll focus on aligning the seats in the car, locating where the pedals are, and then get that brake booster mounted. I'm not sure it really matters in what order I do that. I'll just put a little thought into it and make a decision. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and take care.